Hi, I'm Max Willog, and we're going to take a look through my gymnastics scrapbook. So I can't wait, so let's get stuck in. Oh man, this is actually probably one of my favourite pictures from when I'm younger. I haven't actually got many pictures um, when I was young. It reminds me of London 2012 um, in a funny way because we'd done a, a farewell dinner type of thing and this picture flew up and I think everyone was like, who was that? And, uh, and it worked out it was me. So I, I haven't seen this picture many times, but it's actually a picture that I love. <laughs> It's a little bit older. This is back at the gym that I started at. So this was Sapphire. This was in Hemel Hempstead, where, I'm at, where I originally live, my parents live. Yeah, and I started when I was, I was seven years old. So yeah, it's going through. I remember I was quite flexible when I was young. So, um, but probably this leotard was probably like, it probably meant a lot to me because it's probably one of my first. Back at Sapphire, I remember literally going on pommels until I could do the skill. And uh, I wouldn't stop until I got it. And obviously on pommel horse, it's always been my favourite piece. It's always been the piece that I've trained the most on. Uh, probably trained double the amount of time on pommel than I do on any other piece of apparatus. And there was one, there was one time where I actually remember, I think everybody was getting annoyed because I said like, oh, just one more go and one more go because I couldn't get a skill. Um, so I think having that mindset from a young age has actually helped me get to where I am today. But when I've revisited, it always seems like the gym is 10 times smaller than I remember it. Um, which is a mad feeling. But it's been a crazy journey since then. Crazy. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, this would have been year seven at Long Dean School in my secondary school. Uh, <laughs> thought I was cool with having my tie a little bit loose. I look back at it now, and it's just like, that's just, that's just not cool. But it's quite a cool photo, though, actually. It's better because I hope we don't get to the photos where my hair is really long. That's what I'm dreading because my hair looks quite, quite good there. Oh God, look, here's, here's my long hair. <laughs> oh, it's under 16, I'll pay P-bars. I look quite small, actually. Small body with big hair. I hate looking back at it. I wonder how similar the routine is in terms of structure. My routines have always been planned to help me when I've been a senior. So the structure's always been very similar. So it's quite cool to watch. You can see the moves, that, like that move there, I've always struggled with certain moves. Oh, funky dismount. So the dismount's very changed. So I've always been known as a twister. And obviously, oh, I hate my hair now. I hate my hair so much. <laughs> and my, actually, my parents actually always told me, cut your hair. Um, but I didn't listen because I thought it was cool at the time, but it's really not. Um, but it's quite cool looking at. Like I said, I've always been known as like a, a twister, so I always done funky dismounts off of P bars, off of rings when I was younger, um, making use of taking using my advantages as twisting instead of instead of double somersaults. So it was a bit different and unique, which was cool to see. Okay, another video. I was slightly older because my hair is not as bad. This is where I, my routine started stepping up a level, and I started to sort of get inspired by the other pommel workers that are around from different countries and try and push myself to the limit, really. This was a big year for me because it was, you know, breaking into that senior, senior code where the change for there is, is massive, more than you can ever believe as a junior. And um, your routines have to change, you have to upgrade, and you have to compare to the likes of legends around the world in the sport, which is, is massively motivational. I remember going through a stage where I thought I wasn't as good as what I need to be or other people. Um, and it's, I slowly turned it around and uh, I got there in the end, but I think competitions like this one, Europeans, I look quite tall there, um, but still with long hair. Um, this was huge for me. Um, so this was, this was the Europeans, this was actually Junior Europeans 2010 as well. Um, so my last competition as a, as a junior. And a funny story of that, which wasn't funny at the time. I remember we was training at Lillyshaw in the preparation and the build-up. And for some reason, Scott had went home that day, or I can't remember what happened, but uh, we was playing football in the, in the gardens of, of the National Centre. And um, I drop kicked the ball. And as it, as it dropped slowly back towards me, I went for another kick and it hit the end of my foot. And I badly injured my foot, which was really, really, probably the most frustrating thing I've ever done. And I learned a massive lesson from 
and I remember having to bandage up my foot loads on the competition day because it was still quite sore. But I managed to come out with gold. So I was, it was, I was pretty proud of that kind of experience and that journey. And I think that actually taught me a lot going forward. It definitely taught me not to muck about two weeks before a competition, but it taught me a lot in terms of preparation and, and build up. So yeah, this was a good comp, especially with that team. You look at the boys um, around, obviously Reese, my teammate who's training behind me. You got Frank, Cameron McKenzie and Sam Oldham. Um, everyone is still going. Cameron McKenzie is, you know, in South Africa still training hard. Respect for for Jamaica training hard. And Sam Oldham and Frank are still training hard making teams for GB. So it's um it's good to see all these boys that are still here on the journey that will be back then as well. And London 2012, the big sort of starter for me really, I look at it. And London 2012 was obviously the big target. Being a home games was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And to make this team with these boys and to come back with that bronze medal, uh, first time for a British team in over 100 years was incredible. This was such a strong team and a young team. Um, obviously, you've got Chris Lewis and Dan Purvis that, you know, they were very cemented in a team of seniors and, um, you know, massive chances to go. And, we, you know, me and Sam, you know, having to prove ourselves, the young ones, you know, we was only 19 at this point. Um, quite inexperienced, but inexperienced sort of didn't let us down in the day. And um, it's like, it kind of spurred us on. And we went out with the mentality to go out there, enjoy this experience of a very rare experience of home games and give it our all. And it massively paid off. And I think this is where, you know, I felt holding that Olympic medal that was heavier than I could have ever thought about um, made me realise what my targets could be in the future. So it was a, it was a huge moment for everyone in that team, but um, yeah, massive for me. And then we went on, uh, it must have been quite a few days later, I was obviously made the pommel final, I scraped it. Um, and for me, I was, I was so happy to be in there. Pommel horse, like I said, from when I was very, very young, I always put a lot of time into pommel horse. So to make that final in the Olympic Games in, in front of a home crowd was, was mad. There was actually judges that said that there'd be no chance of two GB guys being on the podium. Um, so for me to do that uh, and to prove some people wrong as well was was a mad time. And I remember going out and just thinking, like, enjoy this experience and literally give it my all because I'm here, I'm at home games, and let's, I've got my Olympic medal as a team. Um, let's just see what I can do here. And I remember performing um, the best I've ever done, uh, that routine before in my whole life. And I got the bronze medal, which was crazy, um, behind Lewis Smith and Christian Berkey. Um, Christian Berkey at the time was the, the most amazing pommel worker that I looked up to because you, you see every competition, he would nail gold every single time. This for me was a, a real starting block on where I thought about the future and what, thought about where I could potentially go. Um, but so surreal. And these medals are still probably look exactly the same. I took so much care of these medals. They were they're absolutely like pristine condition even now. But it's still weird to even get them out and look at them. Okay, another video. Oh, Scott's got hair there. Scott's now bald. <laughs> so high bar is actually a piece that I've throughout my whole career I've always found high bar probably the hardest piece to build my stamina um, and high by my mindset and mine and Scott's plan was to go all out go for the biggest routine that I can because I wanted to try and get a huge score and in order for me to do that to bump my all-round score up I had to take big risks and go for some big moves in there um, so I do a lot of turn moves which are heavily deductible sometimes but if you do them right they can pay off Okay, so this was last piece at my first British all round Championships that I gained that title. So this would have been 2013, so off the back of 2012. And like I said, that really did spur me on, 2012 did. And I feel like from then I went from strength to strength because I'd gained so much motivation. And I always say, if you, if you use a success and you use it right, it can really roll on and help you gain more success in the future. 
And I remember coming off the back Olympics and saying to Scott, I want, I want to prove myself as an all-rounder um, because I hadn't had the opportunity before. So for the next four years, for me, it was all about all-round. Obviously floor and pummel as well, but all-round score for me. I feel like at the time it was, a, it was a massive golden era for BG in terms of the seniors we had. We had, you know, Pur Dan Purvis was an unbelievably consistent all-rounder, you know, Christian Thomas. You know, we've had so many good guys that we come together at the same time. So for me to go and get that title was huge for me at that point. Um, so that was, a, that was a really good feeling. OK, so this is Europeans 2013. Actually, I, do, I, I refer back to this competition, obviously me and Dan there. Keaton's was uh, an unbelievable pommel worker, you know, one of uh, Britain's best pommel workers that we've had as well. Um, training alongside him was always, always brilliant. And this is, I presume this is, this must be pommel final. Dan Keaton's won gold, I won bronze. I know there was a lot of pressure on Keaton's at that point as well. Um, he was getting older in his career and he had a lot of pressure on his shoulders and he managed to pull it off. But for me, this was, um, I always refer back to this competition in my head to gain confidence because I was the most prepared I've ever been for this competition. And I managed to come out with uh, bronze, silver and gold. Um, bronze and pommel, silver all round and gold on floor. And like I said, this was 2013. So off the back of 2012, again, my motivation was so high. Um, and I felt like I was just, I was stepping up a level each time. I was making up grades, I was putting in risk and I was um, literally just loving the experience of going and getting the opportunity to go to major championships after major championships and making teams every time and comparing against the rest of the world in, in the sport. Um, yeah, this, this was um, mad. So, Obviously, the guy in the middle, Kaho Chimura, was my idol. And you always see the quote that you, they say, um, make idols your rivals. And he, I kind of looked at him as he was, at that stage, he was in his prime. He was untouchable. He was the best gymnast that's ever lived. He was scoring scores that were unbelievable. And I, I wanted to come up. And I actually remember saying to my parents, actually, if I was to ever come second to Uchimura, I'd feel like I'd won, and I did here. Um, I made mistakes in qualifications in this in this actual competitions in Nanning, in China, World Championships. So the first bit of the competition was quite rough for me, and I managed to get the opportunity to go into the all-round final and give it all my all. And actually, what's funny is you can still see the scrape on my forehead from where I landed my face in, in qualifications on floor. Um, but I turned it around and this taught me a lot as well because I've always, I always was very strict on in terms of you know eating right and strict, strict with my routines and everything outside the gym and inside of the gym and um, this taught me to relax and chill a little bit because so first of all I didn't make uh, it was a long story but I didn't make qualification I didn't make qualifications my best comp so I, I made mistakes I didn't make all round final so I kind of just relaxed because I'd kind of been done at that championships. And, you know, I started, I ate some chocolate, I ate all this stuff and um, my mindset come out of the zone, if you like. Um, and then I had the opportunity to get into the all round final. And I thought to myself, like, my mindset's come out of the zone. How am I going to do because of, of this and that? And um, it's taught me a lot in terms of just, you know, being relaxed is the, is the best way that you can compete, uh, for me especially. So I went in here and as a huge bonus and just giving it my all. And to come second there was a massive milestone in my career. Um, it was me sort of proving to myself that, you know, I can do this as an all-rounder and proving to everybody else as, you know, trying to be that all-rounder for GB. Um, and obviously with two Japanese guys on the podium, was inspiring for me. They had always been the gymnast that I'd looked up to from a very young age, uh, especially obviously Uchimura and standing next to him on the podium was very, very surreal. So this looks, yeah, Glasgow 2015, Pommel Horse final. I remember 
this was the actual competition, so double rushing there. I remember, I remember changing my routine, you know, walking through the tunnel two minutes before I was about to compete, pretty much. Changing my routine. <laughs> changing my routine to upgrade it by one tenth. Um, we made that decision to do that, and I hadn't practiced it much in the gym, but I thought I, I need to go all out with this. And I managed to win by one tenth, the exact margin that I changed my routine to. And this feeling here, <laughs> I even cheered before I landed. I even cheered in the dismount. That feeling for me was huge. You got to think this was one year before Rio Olympics. Um, and they obviously had this anxious wait for the score. 16.1 uh, on the old code. I was massively happy with that. My target was to get over 16. Um, <laughs> as you can see, it's a huge moment for me and Scott. And I think that put me in a massively strong position going into, uh, into Rio. We set a plan to always to try and get in a position where I had the potential to go into Rio and try and get a gold medal, have the potential for that. Um, so doing that, winning the world title, that was making history, wasn't it? Winning the world title, making history for our country was just, it was mind blowing, it was mad. And that made me think that actually it could be possible in Rio. And I still looked at it at that point, trying not to think about medals too much, you know, going into Rio, but it was very difficult at that point to not, you know, when it come off the back of a world title and making history, I obviously wanted to go and do the same thing in, in Rio and make history by winning the first gold. Um, but I did know that that was a huge challenge at that point and I still had, I still had a fair way to go. And then, yeah, then I'd done it. This was floor, because the pommel horse is very in the distance. So this was the, this was the moment that I'd done it. I, you know, I, I said I had a long, a long way to go, and I really did. So from, from the last video to here, it was a long journey. It really, really was, and a tough journey to make sure I could get to this position. And, oh God, I actually feel a little bit emotional. I can't be off with emotion. <laughs> So I never thought I'd be one of those people that, you know, I, I always said before, before any moment like this that, you know, I watched, I watched people on TV and I watched if they reached the pinnacle of their career, they always, you know, they break down, they get emotional and they go in floods of tears. And I always thought, nah, that wouldn't be me. Like I'd never, I'd never ever feel like that, I don't think. Uh, not that it wouldn't mean a lot to me, but, I'm just not that type of person. And emotions at this time, I think you can see on my face, like I just didn't, I just didn't believe it. And yeah, I think this was, this was floor. So I was very unexpected to win, win a medal on floor. I was very unexpected to even make the final. Um, I, myself, I wanted to make the final, but I wanted to make the final to warm me up for pommel. That's how crazy it was. And I managed to go through the routine clean. I managed to do the routine really good and I was really pleased with it. And I, I think I was third man up out of eight in the final. I then I'd done my routine, I'd done my job. I had to stay in my zone. I still had a pommel horse left and that was my, my full mission. I went there, I remember sitting in the seats a little bit down here with Scott next to me and I had my head down because um, I wasn't really focused on floor, if I'm honest. Um, I didn't know how anyone had done. I didn't know how anyone had done before me. I didn't know how people were doing after me. It was very hard to gauge. The crowd were booing, they were cheering, which in gymnastics is very unheard of as well. You've never really seen that before. So I couldn't gauge if people were making mistakes or not. Um, Christian Thomas was standing in front of me. He was in the final as well. He'd done a great job. Um, and he said, to, I remember him saying to me, Max, do you not want to know where you're placing? Because at the current time, I was obviously at the top of the leaderboard, which I had no clue. Um, and I said, no, no, I'm, no, please don't tell me. Scott was saying, like, do, do you want to know where you're placing? I was saying, no, please, please don't tell me. And eighth man went up, eighth man had done. So that's the final done. And Scott literally, 
punched me in the leg. I don't think he could quite believe it himself. And said, Max, you're Olympic champion. And literally, emotions hit me like a ton of bricks. I remember just like hugging Scott and just getting emotional for the whole time. And, you know, my family were up, you know, around here. Um, and I just, that was probably me looking at them and just, I just couldn't believe that kind of moment that I was in. Uh, yeah, mad. But I still had to focus. I still had to get ready for Pummel Horse, which was next. So this was me gaining my Pummel Horse medal. I looked quite serious in that photo, but um, literally, I've never been the type of person to go mad over it, like I said, but uh, I think a lot of people laugh at me now because my celebration was literally just, just like that. But inside, I was going mad. And I had so much pressure going in um, into this final. And like I said, coming off the back of just literally an hour and a half before getting a gold medal on floor and making history and, you know, doing Partly what a lot of people thought wasn't possible on floor and that piece for me um, and was just surreal to go in and making sure that I could get back in the zone, focus on pummel and do my job, what I've always set, what we set the plan to try and do since the day after 2012. And to go and do it was unbelievable for me. I think, you know, there was a lot of relief I, I, I was confident I could do my routine because the preparation was there, the build-up was there. But you still have to produce your routine at the right time, the right day. And you're on that piece for around 60 seconds and you have to nail every single skill, every single movement. The rivalry that we was building towards this with uh, obviously me and Lewis was, was mad. So the pressure was there, the pressure was building up in the media. And we wanted to produce results and getting silver and gold for GB here was was crazy. Uh, for me, gaining my second Olympic gold medal was something that I literally couldn't comprehend in my head. And that day, looking back on it now, was the most maddest, surreal, craziest day of my life. And I can always look back on that day and think, you know, I'd, I've achieved more than I ever thought I could have as a gymnast. I can look back at that and just think, you know, if I can compete in arenas like London, like Rio, to give me confidence, I think I can compete in any arena. And, and that's how I need to think. And, you know, I can look back at this and just, you know, everything else, I have huge targets, but this gives me a lot of confidence moving forwards and makes me a lot more chilled. So it's a day that I will never, ever forget. Oh God. Wow. God, that was so long ago. We look so young. I mean, me and Leo have been together since we was, since I was 14 years old. And so Leo has been on the journey with me the whole time. And she has been the biggest support in the world. Like, I literally wouldn't be sitting here with any results, anything, if, if it weren't for Leah. Um, my hair was a little bit long, it doesn't look too bad. But, uh, <laughs> God. But we look so young. We must have been about 16, maybe, years old. And, yeah, just, just loving every moment. I think, you know, we were still young. We've been together probably for a few years. And obviously hope we'll be together forever. And we've, you know, 12, 12 years on, and we're married, which is, um, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. She's been literally everything. Uh, God, who put this together? <laughs> oh man, um, God, yeah, this was my, my wedding day. Obviously Scott has been there literally the whole journey, you know, I moved to, I moved to South Essex when I was, when I was 12 years old and, you know, Scott has helped me through like the ups, the downs, the challenges, the successes in everything, you know, inside the gym, 
outside the gym. It's been it's been a mad journey. It really has. Uh, God, sorry. If you can look at what I'm literally like now, you can imagine how my speech went. It was an absolute mess. And I always look to this as sort of, God. <laughs> I can't believe I'm getting emotional over this. Um, I think it was a proud moment for Scott as well as me, you know, standing there on my wedding day I think it's a bit surreal because I think Scott looks around and like we was, you know, 12, 13. He's coached boys from, you know, probably about four or five years old in our group, in our team. And to see us growing up, to see us getting married, is it's probably very surreal for him. Uh, and I, I obviously have a lot to thank Scott for in this journey, in this mad journey and this crazy experience. But yeah, for me, my wedding day was, yeah, I look back and think it was literally one of the best days of my life. I had every, everyone there that I could ever wish for. And it was brilliant. God's sake. What are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah. So this was the moment I actually struggled getting the ring on. So it was quite a funny moment in the actual wedding, but it was another moment where I struggled to keep it together. I'm actually making myself look like I'm an emotional wreck at the moment. It's flipping annoying. Um, I actually can't believe I'm getting emotional about this. Um, yeah, our wedding day was... Our wedding day was mad. Um, it really was, like I keep saying, it was, it was amazing to have like everybody there. And it would be unbelievable to do our wedding day all over again. My ring, I, I remember my friends around me were telling me, you need to get your ring sorted. Uh, <laughs> and I hadn't got it sorted. I, I can't remember how close, can you remember how close you got? I got this, my ring sorted, do you remember? <laughs> It was probably weeks before that I actually got my ring sorted. Leah's ring was sorted, obviously. Um, my ring was sorted literally weeks before. Um, but I was quite chilled about that. It was surreal, but yeah, like I, said, like I keep saying, I can't say it enough, it was one of the, the best days of our lives. Um, yeah, such, such happy memories. And then it gets to this, which was... I knew it was going to get harder. <laughs> so, and then it gets to this day, which you can... God, not many people have probably seen me get emotional. This is probably the, probably the first video. I said the wedding was one of the best days and this was probably the best day. The day that Willow was born, that day was just like mad. I think looking back, like it, me and Leah always look at it and we've, it's very surreal us becoming parents as well. Like we've, uh, we feel, it feels mad that we're parents and it feels, it feels like the best thing in the world. Um, I've always loved Leah, but it's a new kind of love and a new kind of respect when you see everything that labour involves. Um, God's sake. And I think that day, actually, the first time that I held Willow was, I can't explain it. I don't think you can kind of explain it and put it into words and what it's like until you have your own children. But the feeling is indescribable, it really is. And holding her for the first time, I remember just putting it on my chest the first time. And, uh, uh, literally tucking her legs up to my body and yeah it was mad yeah I mean that <sighs> that picture is just yeah crazy looking at it because that one picture means obviously so much to me 
and Willow has grown up so fast since then, it's crazy. So we're coming on to Willow nearly being six months old and she's sitting up, she's rolling over, she's smiling, she's laughing. And like I said, every milestone is just crazy. I'm sorry because my voice is going all over the shop, but um, yeah, it's, it's um, one of the best feelings in the world becoming a parent. And yeah, we feel very lucky. Okay, what's this? Okay, go well, back to Jim. <laughs> God's sake. So this year, so the current year we're in, um, 2019, European Championships was uh, a big moment for me. So I made the final, this is the Pummel Horse final. Off the back of 2018, where I spoke about it, it was a difficult year uh, for me in terms of in the media, seen as, you know, I'd get silvers and it was a failure. So I had a lot to prove that what I was doing was looking at the bigger, bigger picture and making upgrades to make sure I could consolidate my routine. The school you just saw there was a new upgrade I'd made. Um, it was a very difficult routine and what I'm most proud of uh, to this day Obviously, I'm very proud of making that routine, um, but it's, it's keeping the, the high start score and pummel uh, for a number of years. And I have that mindset of doing that to make sure that if I just go clean routine, I can hopefully be, be with a shot. It wasn't so much about proving people wrong, but it was proving to myself and, and to everyone that, you know, my plan was right and what I was doing was right. Um, and to make that routine was, was big. And coming away from it with the title, um, I was very pleased because, you know, for a lot of things it looked like I was back on the map. One more. Well, what's this? Okay. Oh, this is quite a cool one, actually, yeah. So for me, this was my first time competing parallel bars since Rio Olympic Games. So I obviously decided to make the decision to come away from being an all-rounder after Rio Olympics drop to two pieces floor and pommel and focus on improving them, which I'm very happy with my decision, what I did. And then I made the decision not that long ago to go back to four pieces. Floor, pommel, P-bar, high bar. So this was my first time competing P-bar since Rio. So you're talking a long time. And I went out there and I made P-bar final at the British Championships, which I was pretty pleased with. Um, and I managed to get... Oh, I stuck the dismount. I'm pretty pleased with that. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty pleased with that routine. You know, there wasn't much preparation into that. Um, and I kind of just had to go all out on it. Like I said, it was a long time since I'd done it. The training hadn't been, you know, as perfect as, as I was after for that because I hadn't been training for years beforehand. Um, but I'd done a clean routine. I was so pleased with it. And I managed to come out with, I think, was it a bronze medal? That just shows how bad my memory is, because this wasn't that long ago. But I come out of a medal on P-bars, which I was pretty pleased with. Now I'm in a place where I can be prepared on four pieces of apparatus. And in myself, I feel stronger, I feel, I feel better um, for it as well. So it was a good decision to go back, and hopefully it can help myself, help the team. But yeah, that was a mad journey through that. It's quite nice to look back on it, because I don't often. Um, I'm not sure why. I probably should. So if situations come up like this, I probably won't get as emotional. But it was amazing to look back at the whole journey. You know, it's been a long time. Hopefully, there's a lot more to come. I've got a lot more targets, a lot more things you want to hit. Uh, personal life, gymnastics life as well. So hopefully, yeah, I can keep doing what I'm doing and, um, and the team can keep up strong so the sport keeps going for a long time as well. But we will see. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>